In this video, I want to dive more in the actual recommendation queries of our coffee recommendation, what we have here. You just before saw that list, the list of our coffee beans, that is now just ordered by name. But the interesting criteria actually can be taken from the graph in a rather easy way when we use a graph database. And what we have to think of first and consider is what the actual criteria is by which we would like to recommend something. So in our coffee example, this is the taste or the flavor profile of each and every coffee bean. And then we can say, well, whatever a user liked can then be recommended in such a way. And this, of course, really depends on your domain, whatever liked or used means. For example, if you would like to recommend some movies or some music, then this would be obviously what the person consumes, what they watch, what they listen to, or coffee, what they order, or at least if to say, well, did you like it? So for example, if there is some sort of coffee tasting and then you rate the individual beans, which can be done here in our application, then afterwards you can take that criteria and say, okay, wait a second, what type of bean is that? For example, where does it come from? Or more interestingly, what does it taste like? And then you have an idea about others. What we're going to do here, and this is now quite interesting to see, is let's have a look in our code and in the queries that we get. So just as this basic example, I have this sorting by some sort criteria, name is the obvious one, and then we will have some recommendation. So what I would like to uh, show you is I typically um, tend to write these cipher scripts in such a way that the queries are directly in our application, which is very flexible, but at the same time that makes use of the OGM mapping. At the beginning this might be a little bit uh, confusing maybe but how it works is that we basically query for a particular type so that's quite handy this is very similar to what we could do in jpa and then this emits that coffee bean type that we already have but similarly you can also query to something and then make all of the other relationships and uh, fields already be instantiated. How this works is that then we return from that query not only a particular bean, but also well, all of the other things that are somewhat connected, relationships and other nodes. And then out of the box, Neo4j OGM will already map this and then populate our type with the individual fields. So all of that works then that these flavor profiles and ratings and so on will be set if we just return them in our query. So this works quite straightforward. For example, this is the sorting by a rating. Let's start with a very basic uh, rating here. So for example, we would take one of our particular uh, bean. So what I would like, um, for example, I very much uh, like some flowery taste. So for example, uh, this geisha beans, and then we can, can rate them or maybe some uh, some other ones like that. And now if I sort by rating, then obviously these two come first. And that is being implemented by this query to say, well, we could just go with a particular um, rating. So that's easy, but also, well, it depends on what we actually would like to rate by. And um, that's already quite interesting. So we can uh, use this uh, coalesce function to say, well, what should be the default if there is no rating? Otherwise, uh, well, then it might be null and then a nulls uh, might be sorted first. So that's a little bit, uh, a little bit tricky. Um, and then the rating should be the actual uh, rating from that property. So whether we, we rated it as, well, one star, two or three stars. And basically what the rating for us says, and that's also a definition how we would like to map the user uh, rating. That is just an integer from, uh, well, one for one star, two or three. And in our case, the semantics of that should be, well, three stars is really like, two is basically saying not much like, well, yeah, kind of, it's okay. But one is obviously a dislike. So with that, we want to uh, sort them accordingly. And that information later on will be um, interesting. So for that, we can say, well, please just uh, return and order them. So by rating or by bean name. But then again, the interesting part is that we need all this information 
for Neo4j OGM to populate our fields. So if that wouldn't be the case, then half of the table uh, would be empty. We couldn't automatically get all of that information. But now the important part or the more interesting part is the recommendation. And this includes a few things that we need to take into consideration. So first of all, again, the idea, what would we like to take as a criteria to somewhat recommend? This can be many, many things. It can be here the origin, that is a somewhat easy one, but also that might not be the, the best criteria to distinguish whether or not we would like something in the future. Or if we have other users, then we can say, well, a user that has a similar user profile, like for example, they had a similar matching pattern, sort of, in Coffee Stay Like, then what did they like? And then take the ones that I haven't uh, tried, what they uh, tried already, or what we were gonna do just for one particular user in this example is to have the flavor profile of saying, well, how much does this taste like a specific flavor and then rate it accordingly. What I recommend is to, well, build this up step by step actually. So this is um, one particular query that I want to show or one way uh, to do things um, because it really depends what the criteria is and then we need to match accordingly. The good news is that in Neo4j, thanks to this graph query, it is relatively easy to map all of these um, queries, what I explained in a previous video, so this really, really helps us here. Uh, but also just to get a proper um, understanding of what we're doing, I want to build this up step by step. What I typically use is some sort of scratch, uh, scratch pad or a way to try this out in different forms to emit some data as well. It's a little bit like debugging. If we say, for example, I would like to get all of the flavors first and then sort of rate the flavors to begin with what the user rated. So to say how important is a particular flavor with a particular uh, percentage to say, well, what is, let's say, the weights of or the rating of an individual flavor? Because then later on, the individual flavors will just change the outcome here. For example, if I have one, and this will be uh, the first part of our query, uh, one query that just goes through all of the flavors and then says, well, to which flavor is there actually a rating? So you will see, well, that most of the flavors don't have a rating yet. And then what we would like to do, so this is in the query an optional match because not all of them are rated, then and of course, uh, just to mention, the flavor won't be rated, but the coffee bean that has a particular flavor is rated. Um, but then if that is not the case, so what I would like to do is to say, I take one star as something like a negative, like please rate it down, like it should be worse than the default if a user obviously disliked something. For a new flavor, we don't know yet, but if it was one star, then it's definitely a bad idea. So basically treat something like two stars or like the default as the middle ground and something that has been positively rated as really uh, recommended and something negative as negative rating. So what we do in this case, I basically say, well, take two somewhat as a default, that's two stars, but then have minus two so that we end up with, well, either something positive, zero or something negative. And with that, it's quite um, helpful then to use the percentages to say, okay, if something tastes stronger in a specific direction, that is rated an additional on top or an additional negative, depending on the user rating. So in this case, we say, well, basically that will end up as rating. So from uh, minus one to plus one or zero, and then also take the um, taste percentage of like either it's just a single, um, taste for the um, for the default if it actually wasn't rated if it hasn't been rated before take this as a percentage to take the weight by why because well if something is negatively rated that only has a very small percentage of a taste then this might not be that strong or that might not be as a strong criteria to downrate something as opposed to a taste that is very strong in that bean so for that reason, we take the percentage into account here that also gets then factored in for the weight. And that 
enables us to have these weights with the particular flavor. So all of the ones that haven't been rated are zero and the ones that have been positively rated are then well above zero. So just for the example, we will now take another bean and negatively rate it. So for example, um, I typically, and that's my taste, I don't like that much of an earthy or a chocolatey taste. So let's say uh, that should be uh, one star. So then from the rating perspective, that is like a negative one. And then if we try our debug query again here, we see, okay, now the ones with earthy taste, chocolatey taste are actually uh, negative. So this is just a flavor rating. The ones we haven't been rated yet, okay. And the positive ones. And this will later be taken into account when we rate our actual beans or when we weight our actual beans. So for that reason, that is the first part of the query. And now we basically, that is the same thing that we have here, which will be our resulting query. And it continues here that now we say, that is all one query here. Now we say, please match all of the coffee beans and we can match for the structure, match a bean that tastes like a flavor. Why? Because all of the flavors are somewhat included by the beans. So every bean has at least some flavor. So that matches all of the beans and the flavors we, we just had. This optional match is only being used for the OGM mapping so that we have this data as well. And then basically say, well, first of all, this collect is required. Why? Because otherwise we get um, multiple uh, tuples of the same bean. So um, we can check this out if we say, uh, take this uh, particular query, but then change it somewhat. So this is really uh, helpful to use uh, the graph explorer here and to somewhat debug it. So if we say not with, but uh, basically return this with the weight and then order by weight and now include not the collect of the, uh, of the taste, but only just um, the criteria itself, then what will actually happen that we have the beans in multiple forms, so in multiple um, result sets. So for example, then we have this particular bean that has um, that, that flavor, but actually if we uh, check it out in the list, this one here, that's the one we, we downrated, this has not only one flavor, but now it will appear multiple times in our result set, which is actually not uh, what we want. We actually want one row with, for a particular bean and then some, um, well, some sub lists basically for whatever we would like to emit here. So if instead we say, I would like to emit this return bean order by weight, then we will have one particular row here that actually has multiple uh, lists for the tastes and the flavors that are then taken accordingly in the same line of cipher script as the weight. So we say, well, for each and every flavor weight of that particular flavor, please take also the percentage of now that bean of how much that bean tastes like that particular flavor and take it as a weight. So that again, the percentage is being taken into account because if one particular flavor has been downrated very much, but the bean only slightly tastes like that flavor, that just makes sense here to put it into this weight and then uh, return the whole thing. The reason why this is quite bloated here is just again for the OGM mapping. This first of all makes it a little bit harder to write the queries, but it's really helpful that then our OGM framework maps this automatically and if we get the results here in our Java code, then we already have fully populated coffee beans available. All right, now let's try this out. And this code is already being used if we actually take the recommendation sorting. So now we see what is being recommended here. Of course, the ones that have been um, rated uh, positively are, um, are recommended a lot, but also you see, well, there are some other ones that haven't been tried yet. So for example, the fruity ones, that is definitely a plus because I have um, here the fruity taste that is very much, uh, very much liked. And um, then other tastes that we see at the other end of that spectrum where we had the negative rating, 
um, how we have it. So just like that one star uh, down there, then all of the rating, all of the beans that have somewhat a chocolate taste or some earthy, uh, nutty taste are not that well recommended. Why? Because of that negative rating. And we have a lot in the middle that somewhat have, uh, well, either also slightly negative uh, rating with the chocolatey taste or just haven't been rated yet with flavors that hadn't been taken into account. And that is one way how to build up such a recommendation by taking specific criteria like the flavor profiles or the tastes and then build some sort of sorting criteria or some sort of specification. Well, what would we actually like to recommend? And then you can see what criteria we want to rate more as more importantly. So that then basically alters the result of the query and we can see what makes sense for our recommendations. And this is just one example how to use these queries and, and that cipher language, how to build up recommendations, how to use such a weight of particular criteria. This really depends on the domain, again, what we're using. But I hope this already gave you some idea how to start out with building a recommendation engine.